Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dan Clark here with another review. Now, last time I told you how I'm trying to get myself excited for 1991, but the Great American Bash, but I can't do it. I had to rewatch it again, just try to refresh my mind on a couple of things. And quite frankly, I didn't really want to. I had to do it twice. And it just pained me to review this show, but I'm going to do it. No special introduction. We're just going to get cutthroat right to the shit. This show is the epitome of the word shit. When you look up the word shit, this is the picture that will come to mind. This is the very definition of the word suck. Let's put it that way. So live from the Baltimore Arena, this is the 1991 Great American Bash. The backstory to this supposed to be Ric Flair versus Lex Luger for the title. Jim Turd, or Jim Hurd, Jim Hurd, Jim Turd, whatever, is the first of one of the evolving door, one of those evolving door promoters. Soon we have Bill Watts and Eric Bischoff and Vince Russo, whatever. Wanted to shave Ric Flair ball, put him in a gladiator costume or whatever. That's right. The shield wheeling, sword fighting, Wheeling, dealing, the Trojan riding, the Trojan flying, bald headed son of a bitch, Ric Flair, the gladiator. So Jim Hurd tries to fire him, tries to get the belt back, and Ric Flair says, It's not fuck me, it's fuck you. The belt's mine because I put a $25,000 deposit on it. And that's the thing when you won the tile, you would put $25,000 deposit on the belt. When you lose it, you get that money back. He didn't lose it. So instead, the belt initially was his. So he went to the World Wrestling Federation with the belt. And basically, they had to make a new belt. And it looked like shit. Just like this whole show is shit. So let's start out the show. First off, we start out a match with a scaffold match. It's right, it's P in News and Bobby Eaton taking on Terrence Taylor and stunning Steve Austin. Now, this is not a normal scaffold match. Since no one wanted to take the fall, no one wanted to take the horrendous bump, this ends up being a capture the flag match, scaffold match. So basically you have one flag here and you have another flag on the other side and the goal is to capture your flag on the other side and then bring it back. Yeah. On top of a fucking scaffold 25 feet above the ring. That's right. See, even, even when it's extremely windy, it's angry. It's about the thunder over here because it's angry. It's angry. Because of this match. This match is suffering. It sucks. It's boring because all four men are just trying to crawl little by little. Trying not to fall. Just hanging around. Just trying to crawl around. Trying to capture the flag. And then Bobby Eaton finally captures the flag. This is the worst opener of all fucking time. Negative. Three stars. Minus six out of ten. That's right, negative, fucking minus three stars. Moving on to this shit. We have the Diamond Stud, who comes out with Diamond Dallas Page, takes on Tom Zang. Diamond Stud is Scott Hall. Ayo. Well, guess what? Ayo, this match sucks. Um, boring. Diamond Stud gets with the belly to back suplex for the victory. I give this one and a half stars, three out of ten, and went about nine minutes. It's boring. It's whatever. Moving on. We have Ron Simmons versus Oz. Oz is Kevin Nash. Yeah, this is like first he was Oz, then he was Vinny Vegas, and then finally moved to WDF for Diesel. Big Daddy Cool. Diesel. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Well, before that, he was Oz with the Grand Wizard. With hair, bleach blonde hair, actually gray hair, and lime green tights. This match is shit. 
three shoulder tackles gets Ron Simmons the victory, and this gets a freaking dud. Yeah, this is a salad. This is a big steaming pool bowl of suck with a side of suck salad seasoned with special suck seasoning sauce. And what do you have? You have a big pile of suck. That's what it is. Suck. And then we have Ricky Morton versus Robert Gibson. Now, these two were from the big, great Rock and Roll Express tag team. Clash of the Champions 15, they broke up. Um, Ricky Morton turned on his partner and uh, tried to make a big singles run, which, yes, Ricky Morton was the better wrestler, but really this should have happened probably a little bit too late, too, too late, too late, I would like to say. They should have did this a long, long time ago. This is this could be a great match, but it ends up being boring and snooze fest. It's a boring pile of crap. It you might as well just take a nap. This is the equipment. What what well, basically this match is is just two guys just laying around sleeping. That's what it should be because it'd be no fucking different. All these wrist locks and wrist holds and stalling and stalling and stalling and nothing. Minutes and minutes will go by and nothing will fucking happen. You might as well just lay down in the ring and just take a giant nap. It'd be no fucking different. This match sucks. Finally gets a big brawl on the, on the ramp. Ricky Morton or Richard Morton, he's called here, doesn't even bother to change his gear, still has his rock and roll tights on. Um, gets a cheap victory, hitting the head with a foreign object, and gets the victory. One star, two out of ten. Next up, we have the six man elimination match between uh, Dustin Rhodes, the uh, Young Pistols, and the Freebirds. Um, this match is good. It's, okay. it's a good match, but it's really not anything special really it's just a typical normal match not pay-per-view quality not big time match quality it's just fine match two and a half stars five out of ten Dustin Rhodes is the one that ends up getting the whole victory soon enough nobody gets eliminated like 17 minutes will go by you know, actually 15 minutes will go on and nobody would get eliminated. Then someone will get eliminated. And then all of a sudden, four guys would get eliminated in a matter of a minute. And then it ends 17 minutes. And Dustin Rhodes gets the victory. Two and a half stars. Five out of ten. Next up, we have the Yellow Dog versus Johnny B. Bad. Uh, the Yellow Dog is Brian Pillman in a fucking mask. I don't know why... He was under a mask. Blame fucking Dusty Rhodes for this shit. Um, Yellow Dog defeats Johnny B. Bad. Johnny B. Bad becomes Mark Merrill. And at this time around, he's doing the whole Lil Richard gimmick. Which, honest to God, Mark Merrill looks like Lil fucking Richard. This match sucks. Uh, nothing exciting. Pillman... Boring right now. He's not even half-assing it. He's quarter-assing it. What is half-ass? It's not even he brought the half-ass with him. It sucks. This match sucks. Moving on. One star. Yellow Dog gets a... Uh, Brian Pillman gets a DQ victory because Teddy Long with hair comes out for no stupid reason to cause a DQ disqualification. Why? Why? Makes no sense. Moving on. A lumberjack match between Big Josh and Blackbeard. What the fuck is... Who are these two? I don't know. Uh, I tried looking these two up and I still didn't know who the fuck these two are. It's a typical lumberjack match, you know. Bad guy gets tossed out. The good guys beat the crap out of him. And then the good guy gets tossed out on the bad guy's side. And the bad guys beat him up. Soon enough, Dustin Rhodes comes in. Hits a top rope. Uh... Uh, axe handle on blood and Jack gets the victory. Whoop de fucking do, Basil. This match was about six minutes long and I give it one and a half stars. 
Next up, we have El Gigante, the Giant Gonzalez taking on One Man Gang. El Gigante is the worst motherfucking wrestler in ever. The worst motherfucking mainstream wrestler. Why Vince McMahon hired him? Why did he was in WCW? Why? Why was he? What's the special attraction? He's eight fucking feet tall almost. So what? He can't walk. He can't stand. He comes out with four freaking midgets. Whatever. Um, works on him. Gang works on him. And Elegante just can't sell. He's just going. Ugh, 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 ugh. He can't fall whatsoever. Second worst match on this card. Negative two and a half. Stars minus five out of ten. This is shit. Moving on. The Russian chain match between Nikita Koloff and Sting. Now this could be this could be one of the greatest matches because this this feud was hot, red hot, and both guys got a tremendous tremendous ovation. But it's just boring. It's disappointing. It's bad. It's bad. Um, both men hit three turnbuckles each time, right? And in the fourth, Sting hits a Stinger Splash, and Nikita Koloff hits the fourth post behind him before Sting could. So Nikita Koloff won off of a Stinger Splash. That's how it's done in a Russian chain match. It works like a, like a leather strap match, whatever. You have to hit all four posts. And that's how you win. So, one and a half star. Again, could have been great. Could have been five stars. Whatever. Sucked. Big time. Then, as it pours rain, I gotta hurry up and finish this. But there's not much to it. WCW World Championship match on the line here in a steel cage. Lex Luger versus Barry Windham. Luger defeats Barry Windham. And you know the backstory of this. Whatever. It's a fine match. I give it... Uh, I give it two, two and a fourth of a star. Yeah, that's right. Two and a fourth of a star. Nothing special here. Moving on to the main event. Yeah, it's not the main event. We have a main event in Rick Steiner and Miss Hyatt versus Arn Anderson and Paulie Dangerously in a cage match. This was about two minutes long. Miss Hyatt gets kidnapped, taken to the back, whatever. Rick Siren gets a victory, beats the shit out of Dangerously. This match gets a dud because it sucked the big one. Two minutes long, whatever. So, this whole show is the epitome of the word suck. That's right. It suck. It's full of suck. It sucks to suck. And that's what 1991 Great American Bash is. It sucks. One out of ten is what I give it. One out of ten. 1992 Great American Bash is next. Sting vs. Vader. 1991, one of the worst shows of all time. Goodbye.